Hey everyone, as requested I'm going to review the video Why Raw, Paleo and Keto Diets Are Stupid. Of all the fad diets that have come and gone through the years, the raw and paleo diets might just be the stupidest. Don't get me started on keto, though we will get back to that. I'd call raw and paleo the stupidest because they are predicated on some very suspect notions of how our bodies work and how they evolve to work that way. We'll start with the raw diet. Certainly you can live a long, healthy life eating all kinds of diets, and any diet that restricts the premise is already horrible, of course you cannot eat any diet. Every animal only has one natural diet. If they don't eat that diet, then they will not live a long and healthy life. They will be sick and die prematurely. Humans only have animal cells. We are animals biologically. We also only have one natural diet. Tricks, refined carbohydrates, and other processed foods will probably do some good for people like me living overfed lives. So whatever works for you, works. Just don't let anyone tell you that a raw foods diet is more natural, because we humans have been cooking our food since before we were homo sapiens. In fact, cooking might be part of why we are homo sapiens. What I just said is known in the field of anthropology as the cooking hypothesis, and while the lifestyles of our Paleolithic ancestors may differ quite a bit from our own, the reason- Wow. Just don't let anybody tell you that food in its natural state is natural. What? Also, why do you mention a hypothesis? It's by definition a religious belief, based on no evidence. Using a man-made pot, man-made vegetables which don't exist in nature, that means that they were not even able to use them back then. Also, no human would ever put meat together with toxic vegetables, even if they would cook their food. <laughs> why cooking was advantageous to them still apply to us. Scholars believe the human ancestor Homo erectus started eating meat about two and a half million years ago. They invented yes, cooking they believe about it. a million years ago. Based on nothing. Cooking became a widespread practice around 250,000 years ago, and that's about when the first anatomically modern humans appeared, the first Homo sapiens. These are all interrelated events, or so goes the hypothesis. The Bible has the more evidence that than once that. Once we started cooking, we were able to extract a lot more energy, and that really helped further push us into sort of being the human Wow. Is this the expert? More energy from cooked food. Let's see. We have studies that prove that cooking destroys amino acids, which give energy, right? Calories, that's what they are talking about. Fat, of course, also. Everything shows that cooked food has less energy and there's zero proof that you could in any way extract more energy from it. Because actually there is proof that all cooked food, because it's denatured, which is why it's super important to eat your natural diet, as in raw food, of course, is not as easy to digest. Cooked meat compared to raw meat is way harder to digest Everybody from experience knows this. Entities that, that we now understand ourselves to be. This is Dr. Jessica Hamm, an anthropology professor at Oxford College of Emory University. When we shifted blah, from blah, blah. a fully raw foods diet into a diet in which meat would have been part of the diet and cooking of foods would have been part of the diet, we're extract. <sighs> what is this? She's implying that since we started cooking food, we were also able to start eating meat because, of course, we didn't eat raw meat, right? Even 100 years ago, most people still ate raw meat. Tons of restaurants have raw meat dishes because that's our so-called past. It's just in every culture because that's what humans eat. The longest living people, the Okinawans, eat raw goat meat, fish, everything. It's incredibly common. What are you talking about? Acting more energy, um, our guts are shrinking, uh, sort of the, the, the shape and size of our teeth is also changing. Zero proof for any not, of it. You know, having to grind away at, at raw things. Indeed, compare yourself to... Again, what are you talking about? Raw meat compared to cooked meat is way softer. Again, everybody knows this except for some ignorant people who live completely removed from nature lives 
in the city who have never tried eating any natural food. The most important thing to understand here is that she has zero proof for anything that she's saying. It's all based on empty beliefs. I made a video about this, I will link it in the description if you want to learn more about it. This cow, or this buffalo, or this goat. Your digestive system is way smaller proportional to your body. I don't need to spend literally my entire day chewing my cud, and my body hardware doesn't need to be monopolized with the constant work of breaking it down. Cooking allows us to take more nutrient-dense foods and to pre-digest them outside our body, to break them down in the pot. Again, there's zero proof that cooking food pre-digests it. Whatever that means, it's an empty belief based on absolutely nothing. So that our bodies will have less work to do once we actually eat. As the hypothesis goes, this innovation yeah, was so powerful that it allowed our anatomy to evolve. So all of those shifts in our biology then leads energy to... Our digestive tract is the same length as a dog's or a cat's less body lion wolf. Time dedicated to That's why we are supposed to eat raw meat. There's nothing to do with cooking. There's a whole other argument that says cooking allowed communities to extract more from their shared food supply, thus freeing up some members of that society to be architects and soldiers and stonemasons and priests. What are you talking about? Instead of everybody just being a farmer. Dr. Ham herself is a cultural anthropologist, and while she's actually a little skeptical that cooking played such a direct role in our physical evolution, she's absolutely convinced it was huge in our social evolution. Cooking mm. is an inherently social act, so you look at cultures around the world and, and all cultures are, are cooking their food. Um, and there are many food cultures, I would say perhaps contemporary North American food culture being one of them, where you see a combination of cooked and raw eating. In many cultures, uh, raw foods are not a thing. Uh, for example, where I do field work in Ghana, you like you would not be considered to have eaten a meal if you did if you ate raw food. Food there is considered to be cooked. For those times where I was craving a salad, I would kind of secretly go to the market to buy vegetables and then hide out in my room and and eat my salad by myself because I knew that it would. Um, it would be mocked. It's hard not to feel bad. Firstly, there's tons of societies, cultures that never cooked anything and still don't. Then, of course, there's other places that were, for example, colonized actually by so called white people and they were taught to cook their food. That doesn't mean that they used to do that, obviously, because before cooking, everything was eaten raw. Why cooking started and so on, I made a video about essentially today the reason people cook their food is because it's socially accepted. That's it. There's no other reason for it. Obviously, health-wise, it's way worse for you. And for Dr. Ham there, furtively sneaking her salad. But the Ghanaian people might be onto something because cooking has nutritional benefits that are still very relevant to us people living This today. I want to hear. And we shall discuss those right after I thank the sponsor of this video, Trade Coffee. Coffee ain't allowed in raw or paleo diets, which as far as I'm concerned is reason enough to call them stupid. Trade is a way yep. for you to get new and exciting coffees selected for your taste. You're an adrenaline right junkie, get you a drug addict. Every day without going out to the that grocery says everything store about or coffee you. shop. Why would anybody you listen to you? you drinktrade.com and take their quiz. Are you a total coffee nerd or are you a noob? I'd call myself intermediate these days. You tell them how you make your coffee. That really affects what kind. It's is made from toxic you. seeds. So with a lot of these questions, if you don't have that's super why it produces opinions, stress hormones. Say, Surprise me. It's I extremely agree. poisonous. Trade makes some Did you know you that? Which show up right <laughs> at your door. This does indeed taste of cane sugar, cherry, and vanilla. Yum. Then you go online Inkle, and rate good bend. things like stone basins and later water-safe pottery really would have allowed humans to get more from their food by boiling it. In our romantic imaginations, ancient humans are roasting meat on a stick over an open flame. But with a tough piece of wild animal, it's amazing how little you can get off the bone this way. But cook the same chunk in water for a few hours and everything literally falls off the bone. Plus, tons of proteins and other nutrients lost in cooking are conveniently dissolved 
dissolved in the broth, which you can drink. And this is the moment when a raw there's zero proof for that. Of course, as I said before, we have studies that prove that cooking destroys amino acids, for example. <laughs> of course, heat destroys. It's as if I gotta explain it to somebody who's mentally challenged. If you put your hand into boiling water, it will hurt because it will destroy your hand. If you put any food into boiling water, then it will destroy the food. What's so hard to understand about it? It's just complete brainwash that's going on nowadays. Also, cooking food will not make it easier to chew or to get it from a bone. This is typical ignorance from somebody who has not tried eating food in its natural state, as in raw meat, from a bone or whatever. Try it and you will see that you were wrong your whole life. Foods advocate would say, hey, but wait a minute, cooking destroys some nutrients. Well, that's true. You'll, you lose some nutrients every time you cook food, but the, the losses are very small, but the benefits of cooking far outweigh any negatives. That's Dr. Tim okay, Crow, what are a the benefits? nutrition researcher and host of the Thinking Nutrition podcast. And the benefits are you actually make some nutrients more available, you make some food more easily digestible, and you actually make it safer as well because you kill off a lot of the, the, the bacteria that causes food poisoning. Right. You kill off the bacteria which causes food poisoning. Great. That's, of course, the germ theory, which, again, is just an empty religious belief based on nothing. There's zero proof that any bacteria or any microorganisms cause disease. It has never been proven in any way whatsoever. It's actually even in the name. Food poisoning comes from food poisoning, as in poison. And it's been proven, actually, that it's caused by toxins. Because of the way we treat animals, for example, nowadays, and most food poisoning cases are from cooked food. And if they are from raw food, then it's from vegetables. Look into it. Also, of course, you don't make some nutrients more bioavailable. Again, zero proof. These people who learn this stuff are taught to not question anything that they learn and to blindly believe anything that they are taught. And this is why there will never be any proof for anything that they say. Which is a major cause of, of illness and sickness in the world. Indeed, the latter benefit might be part of why cooking is particularly important in Ghana and other developing countries, where food and water supplies might not always be so sterile. But Lord knows we have our own food safety issues here in the United States, the land of factory farmed everything. So when you cook food, there's some nutrients you do maybe absorb less of, but there's others that you absorb more of. So it's a case of swings and roundabouts. And I'll use a good example. There's a, a vitamin, one of the uh, vitamin A family members called lycopene. It's a, a vitamin A pigment. It gives foods, it's, they're red color, particularly tomatoes. They're high in lycopene. When you cook tomatoes, you actually absorb more of this vitamin A antioxidant into your bloodstream. So that's a nice example. Another Of course, he presented no proof, but wow. <laughs> He just said that, wow, what? The pigment is vitamin A. Vitamin A is an animal vitamin. It's not found in any plants. Is this the expert? What am I listening to? It's the same as saying that beta carotene in carrots is vitamin A. Of course, it's only a pigment. You would have to convert it to vitamin A, and that's extremely hard. You need saturated fat for that. And uh, pretty much only herbivorous animals, meaning animals that eat mostly plants, of course there are no actual herbivores out there, all animals are omnivores at the end of the day, but those that are naturally designed to eat plants could do that, and uh, tomatoes, the ones he just showed, are man-made, they don't exist in nature, and he showed these black tomatoes, which means that the pigments, as you could see, were already destroyed, at least on the outside. I don't know how they look like on the inside. So we already know that there's pretty much none of the pigments left. It's completely irrelevant anyway, because that's not vitamin A. And this perfectly proves 
that he has no idea what he's talking about. It's virtually impossible to digest beans and lentils and such without cooking them first. Now, there are some people who say they like the raw foods diet precisely because of reduced bioavailability. They're hoping that it'll help them make some reductions of their own. You actually do, do absorb some of the nutrients less because you don't break down the cell walls. Uh, and interestingly, it's actually thought that you know, the potential calories in some of these foods, you don't absorb them all. And so a lot of people, when they go on a raw food diet, they can lose weight, number one, because it limits their food choices. They stop eating a lot of junk food, and maybe they actually absorb a few less calories, which in the Western world is a good thing. Simply passing perfectly good food without actually using it, that's just dumb. Speaking of dumb, the pain... Plants are indigestible. Of course you do not want to digest them. That's good. It's fiber which is not digestible with the human digestive tract. If you cook them, then you simply destroy some of the toxins, anti-nutrients. They may not cause as much discomfort in the gut, but that doesn't mean that it's easier to digest. If you want to get all of those chemicals, then I would rather recommend juicing all of the stuff. And of course, beans are also not easier to digest, is that you cook the toxins to death soak them and try to get all of the nutrients and toxins out of them so that you're left with empty fiber at the end. That doesn't mean that it's easier to digest. Paleo diet, the diet that eschews grains and legumes and dairy on the basis that these foods were supposedly not consumed by our Stone Age ancestors. We're not meant to eat them, these people say. But there is archaeological evidence of humans eating grains, for example, if this is based on stool, then you could also say that humans are supposed to eat tree bark, because you could probably find stool of humans who ate tree bark. <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. If humans are starving, they will also eat other humans, and so on. It's no proof of what our natural diet is, what's healthy for us, or anything. You could find absolutely anything in stool. It's just irrelevant. Also, this guy likes to use the word dumb all the time. You're totally projecting. It's obvious to anybody watching. Deep in the Paleolithic era, long before the first agricultural revolution. And of course, many of the vegetables that paleo dieters do eat did not exist at all in the Stone Age. Their modern creation now he mentions is the product it. of millennia of selective breeding by humans. Which brings us finally to the fad diet du jour, the ketogenic diet, keto, another low-carb diet like Atkins and Paleo that restricts starch and sugar. The modern ketogenic diet was invented in the early 20th century not as a treatment for obesity, but as a preventive treatment for seizures. If you're a child and you have uh, uh, epilepsy, the ketogenic diet has been known for decades and decades and decades to help control epileptic seizures in children. That's the end of the medical use of a ketogenic diet as far as having evidence for a benefit. Basically, if you replace nearly all of the carbohydrate calories in your diet with fat calories, you will force your body to produce these things called ketone bodies that your brain will eat in place of the blood sugar, glucose, that your brain would normally eat. And this for... What do you mean by normally? In most countries, most of the year, you would of course not have access to any starch, anything that turns into sugar in your body. No fruit, nothing, seeing as most of that is man-made anyway. Of course, you would be in ketosis most of the year. And also, our expert again, no other medical use for a ketogenic diet. What? There's so many studies out there at this point, comparing it also to other diets, showing so many health benefits. This ignorance for science reasons, helps to prevent epileptic seizures. And people have now seized on keto as a fad diet to lose weight. Here's an example of an actual keto diet designed for a five-year-old kid with epilepsy. These poor kids literally have to have heavy whipping cream with every meal. Poor kids? And unless you are a hardcore athlete... Kids you, like you, you whipping know, cream. ...an elite athlete who is really focused on eating that way, you have a very obsessive compulsive personality. Few people stick to a true ketogenic diet for more than three to six months, they start introducing carbohydrates back into the diet because let's face it, bread and pasta is pretty awesome. So if keto works for you. Wow. Okay. You already lost all credibility, but what? Bread and pasta is pretty awesome. 
It's phytic acid, empty sugar and fiber. It's nothing. It's incredibly unhealthy. Bread and pasta are probably the unhealthiest foods ever in the history of humanity. It's completely man-made. It's toxic. It's poisonous. What are you talking about, man? What is this guy? <sighs> wow. By all means, do it, but few people actually do keto as it's designed. You don't have to do keto the whole year. Of course, yeah, you could get some fruit, berries, whatever, that, and that's not in summer. Dr. Crow is one of like a hundred nutrition experts I've talked to at this point in my life who all say different shades of the same thing. The problem in your diet probably isn't the bread you're baking at home or the fresh pastas you're making at home. It's the processed food. It's the sugary junk you buy off the shelf. Wait, wait, what? Bread and pasta are some of the most processed foods ever. It's completely processed. It's grain sludge formed into the form of noodles or bread, and then you eat it. Oh, who's ah, what? How can you call people stupid? You're one of the stupidest people I've seen on YouTube. I'm not even kidding. Anybody who eats bread or pasta is pretty stupid, right? <laughs> There's no arguing. Fast food burgers and fries. So any diet plan that knocks most of that out of your diet is probably going to do you a world of good. And that is the only fad diet you need to know about. Also, coffee is good. Thanks again to Trade for sponsoring this vid. That link for the first hundred of you to get 30% off your first bag is in the description. Okay, I'm done with you. Wow. Okay. He talked about raw diets, didn't even talk about raw meat because in his brainwashed mind he can't even comprehend that uh, raw food could also mean raw meat. That's what humans actually eat in nature. Just watch any tribe documentaries, people kill an elephant, they all rush to it and eat it raw. They always eat everything raw, they drink the blood, eat the organs first, then they leave the muscle meat. There's few exceptions as to why they would cook in some places where the meat maybe gets frozen, they want to warm it up and so on. As I said, I made a separate video about this. He's projecting throughout the whole video. It's almost hard to watch. This aggression he has is because he can't accept that anybody could have a different diet, that anything else could possibly be healthy, right? It's all stupid. Dumb, 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 dumb. Come on, man. It's very easy to see through you. You have a lot of issues. That's it. Thanks for watching.